All right, the cylindrical surface has a surface charge and we want to know what the total amount of charge is, okay? So the equation we'll use for this is there it goes um, is Q is equal to the integral of the surface times rho s, right? Because rho s is going to be in units of, in this case, nanocoulombs per meter squared. But really, we're, we're concerned with the coulombs per meter squared. And then the surface will give us a meter squared. These will cancel. And we will be left with a value of coulombs. Okay. So that's our fundamental equation. Now, the next thing I'd like to do is draw out the cylinder. Cylinder is going to look something like this. This will be an 8 right there for the radius, and then it'll extend infinitely through the z axis. So, kind of imagine a cylinder going all the way up like that. Not a great drawing, but you get the point. So, the first thing we need to do is find out what the surface integral is going to look like. Um, well, the surface integral is going to be this 8 centimeters, and I'll write it as 0 0.08. I'm going to leave out the units, and then you're going to have to integrate through 0 to 2 pi to get your angle. That brings us all the way around the circle, right? And then you'll have to go from negative infinity to positive infinity to go all the way up and down the z-axis. And once you go, once you go around the circle and up the z-axis, you have the whole entire cylinder, the surface of the cylinder. <clears throat> okay. And of course, we're going to multiply that by rho s. And I'll plug in the rho s value now, which is 5e. I get 20 to z, and it's going to be d c d v. Now let's not forget that this is in terms of uh, nanocoulombs per meter squared, but I'm going to take out the units and write this as 1 times 10 to the negative 9. And that's just the nano portion of the nanocoulomb. Okay? Um, we can bring out this 5 and then we can also see that this is just going to be this integral oh, oops. this integral here is just going to be 2 pi right so you'll be left with 0 0.08 5, 2 pi, and then integral from negative infinity to infinity, dz, 1 times 10 negative 9. Okay, so the next thing we need to realize is that this integral has two limits, both going to infinity. We can only evaluate an integral that has one limit, right? So we're going to need to take this and turn this into a zero, but that changes our integral. We just cut our integral in half, right? So in order to do that, we'll have to put a two out here. So that way we're doubling whatever quantity we had. Okay. Alright, 
Let's get a number here to s make things nice. This is going to turn to 5.0267. Um, now we can evaluate this integral. This integral is going to be, this is a zero. We're going to have this negative 20 is going to come down, right? It's going to be 1 over 20. And then we'll still have the e to the negative 20z. Because e pretty much stays itself when it's integrated. And it's going to have the bounds of 0 to infinity. And then we still have this nano out there. Okay. So these two, you can combine that, we will get negative 0 0.25. And then we'll have e to the negative 20 to the infinity minus e to the negative 0. And I didn't put the 20 there because the 0 is already there. It's kind of irrelevant, right? So since this value is infinity, negative infinity, this whole number goes to zero, right? And since this is a zero, this is going to go to one. And you can see that this is a negative one. That's a negative uh, 0.25. We end up with positive 0 0.25 nanocoulombs. OK, so that's your first answer. Let's go back to the top and look at our other question. How much flux leaves the surface from the portion uh, 1 centimeter to 5 centimeters and 30 degrees to 90 degrees? Okay, so whenever you think about flux, oftentimes you're gonna, you can use the Gaussian rule that when you have some when you have a certain amount of charge enclosed the flux leaving the enclosed circle is going to equal the charge inside so whatever charge these guys have is going to be equivalent to the to the flux okay so we're going to be left with pretty similar equation. It's going to be phi is equal to Q is equal to the integral of rho s, s. Just like last time. The only difference is we now have a partial, instead of that whole cylinder, we only have a part of that cylinder. And that part's going to be z in the range 1 centimeter to 5 centimeter. And then phi in the range shouldn't use an equal sign there, but you get you know what I'm saying. Phi in the range 30 degrees to 90 degrees. Okay. Yeah, I don't like the way I wrote that, but you get the point. So we can change Z. I'll write it like this. Um, 0 0.01 to 0 0.05. I'm getting rid of the units again. And then Phi um, from pi over 6 to pi over 2. And I just converted, all I did is converted these units. You know, 90 degrees is pi half, uh, 30 is pi, pi 6. So, Q is equal to 
same thing, 0 0.08. This is our 8 centimeters. This is our row value. And now you have the uh, angle integration. And then this is the Z integration. And then we still have our row S, which was, this is row S. And then we still have our nano coulomb value. Okay. <clears throat> so just like last time, I'll bring the five out to here and I'll do this portion. Oh, this is supposed to be a two, sorry. I'll, I'm going to do this portion of the integral because the reason it's, it's easy to do this integral is because there's no dependence on phi, so we just know that it's just going to be those two values. Five pi half minus pi six, and then we still have our integral. 0 0.01, 0 0.05, e to the negative 20, z, dz. Okay. So now, this value comes to be 0 0.42. And then this integral is going to be negative 1 over 20. And we still have our bounds. Um, combine this. Now I'm plugging in our values of z. This comes out to be negative 0 0.45. And combining all these, you're left with so there's your second answer. First answer. Okay, I hope that helps. Thank you. Goodbye.